a little bit later with the, the link to, to watch the, the recorded version. So everyone, thank you for joining us. It's a real pleasure to, uh, to meet you every other week uh, with the Hospitality Forwards webinar series. Um, I am Natalie Pleaviovac uh, from Battelle USA, uh, I'm hosting this webinar. And um, today uh, we will uh, have an amazing guest, James uh, Lemon, uh, who uh -huh. will present a little bit later in more details. Um, right now, I would like to um, uh, present this webinar. Uh, if Vivian can put on the um, uh, PowerPoint presentation that we have, so I can highlight uh, how the webinar is going to unfold and present Alliance and Patel as the two entities that are providing you this webinar right now. So um, I am Natalie Pleavirovac. I am the program director for the master and MBA programs at Battelle USA. Uh, we work in collaboration with Alliance International Universities, uh, where the, the courses uh, are, are taught. Um, the CSML program, thank you, Vivian. The CSML program uh, is the um, so uh, the California School of Management and Leadership, CSML, um, have um, uh, a different program in leadership. Um, if we can go to the next slide, Vivian, please. Thank you. Um, so um, some of the program that uh, CSML is offering in at Alliance San Diego program uh, is the management with the specialization um, MBA hospitality management. We include a CPT program, uh, which means that our students are able to work uh, part-time during their studies, which is really important, especially in the hospitality industry, because we want our students to have a professional experience um, while studying with us. Um, the CSML program also have uh, EST and digital marketing specialization program uh, with also uh, the opportunity to work during the studies. Um, the CSML program also include the MS uh, data analytic, MSDA, the MS informatic information systems and technology, MSIST, the MS healthcare analytic, MSHA, the BS Hospitality Management, uh, that's us with Vatel, uh, including also the CPT program uh, for training. The BS in Business Administration with IST and Digital Marketing Specializations. The BS Information Systems and Technology, the BSIST. And the BDA with Specialization in Information and Data Services. So that's the um, uh, leadership and management programs that um, our partner Alliance is offering. And then on the Vatel side, uh, I would like to introduce the Vatel group uh, that many of you already know, uh, but the Vatel uh, Hospitality Management Group uh, has 50 campuses all around the world, uh, starting in France. This is me. <laughs> um, so Vatel, uh, has 50 school um, campuses all over the world. Uh, our focus is really to create uh, a new kind of managers for the hospitality industry. Uh, our focus is really excellence in, um, in, in, in courses and, and um, you know, in, in the learning experience and also um, a training uh, in the hospitality industry, uh, providing amazing opportunities for the students all around the world to actually train in luxury hospitality um, uh, locations and, and provide all of the knowledge, uh, both academic and uh, on the field, so our students can become managers uh, right after the program. Um, now I would like to move on and introduce our guest, James Lemon. Um, James is uh, specialized in innovation and technology and strategy for the hospitality industry. I'm very excited because uh, James has really uh, innovative ideas and uh, an amazing perspective uh, on the hospitality industry, especially in these troubled times that we are uh, 
living right now and um, and it offers solutions and and ways to for our students uh, really to um, uh, move forward and, and find ways to really make a difference and, and, and create a, an amazing career in hospitality. James, uh, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit more? I know you uh, work with amazing um, uh, groups and uh, the, the largest hospitality groups like uh, Inter uh, Intercontinental and Marriott. So um, please uh, let us know yeah. a little bit more about you. Thanks, Natalie. And obviously it's great to kind of be here and have a chance to share some perspectives at a crazy time uh, with the students and alumni of, of the tell. Um, absolutely, so I've spent a decade in hospitality. Five years of that was with IHG in corporate um, development and strategy, looking at where to grow in the world, what kind of guest experiences to offer, uh, the role of rising technologies, that kind of thing. I then spent five years more on the tech and startup side of, of travel. Firstly at Travelport, one of the big global distribution systems, um, connecting agencies, online travel agencies with hotels. And then, and then more kind of, I, I was COO of an Airbnb management company of about two and a half thousand homes over Europe. And for about two years, I've been running my own business, helping both hoteliers embrace strategy, innovation and technology, but also helping technology companies really think about what are the solutions that are going to be driving kind of the best guest experience. So absolutely work with like um, Intercontinental and some of the more kind of disrupted, cooler brands. And uh, it's been a bit of fun journey. Excellent. Yes. What's really interesting about your um, career background and your profile is that um, you're really about finding new solutions and um, ways to enrich the, the guest experience and uh, in a very creative way. Um, so I'm very excited for us to hear more about what you have to say today. I know you have an amazing presentation and amazing opportunities for the Vatel students as well. Brilliant. No pressure at all. <laughs> That's great. Very <laughs> kind words. Shall I kick off? Let me um, let me share my let me share my screen then, and I'll, and I'll get started. No, absolutely right. I think we wanted to do a couple of things here today. I think the thir first is actually just give a, a sense of kind of what's going on in the industry and how hotel chains are thinking about you know the next few months and years. Um, but I think also we actually wanted to kind of try and give back a little bit to, to, to the students and to you all um, because it's such a tough time and we know a lot of you have some anxiety about going into hospitality when things are quite this tough. So I just wanted to share some perspective on what you can be working on and the kind of tool, tools and skills that will probably be needed in the next few years. So hopefully that's, that's useful. Um, you know, this is going to be all about creating yourself. You know, what, what kind of tools do you need to be the best version uh, of, of, of a hospitality leader that, that you can be. I'm sure Steven Spielberg wasn't thinking about hospitality professionals when he wrote this, but I thought uh, a great quote, to, uh, great quote to start with. So first of all, I'm just gonna share some thoughts on the topic, uh, make a kind of quick introduction, diving into some of the realities that hotels are facing today and the importance for, for those chains, businesses, but also young leaders like yourselves to help companies plan further ahead than perhaps we have in the past. Next, I wanna discuss kind of why it's pretty important to manage yourself right now. Um, and obviously, uh, it become clear, I wanna talk about the value of mentoring, uh, getting exposure from people with really good field experience. And that leads us nicely into an offering that we have with Vitel, um, kind of combining forces, Vitel and the Growth Works to offer access to a global mentoring program and platform that we've developed entirely free um, as part of the Vitel um, services. So that's going to be a, a pretty cool kind of finish. Um, so let me get into it. Again, I kind of gave this away a little bit, but absolutely right. For two years, I've been running my own consultancy, working with people like IHG, thinking about how to build brands and distribution strategies and just more resilient businesses in hospitality. And then, um, you know, by my background, I've done a lot of strategy work. I've also led big teams as well. You know, as, as a COO, you're looking after you know, sales and account management, really thinking about growth. But of course, you're thinking about propositions and products, what's going to be right for the future. Take, takeaway here is that we, were, we felt really well networked um, by the start of the crisis to, you know, even though things are quieter in our core business, we felt it was a great time to, you know, build on our DNA of building a really resilient industry to actually thinking about how can we turn our hand to mentorship and how can we turn our hands to working on things for the next generation. So let's get into it. I spent kind of 10 minutes or so on kind of crisis and, and strategy. 
I think you'll hear a lot of people say a crisis is an opportunity, but what does that really, what does that really mean? Because everyone is, is flat out or running around with you know, things on fire, you know, revenues falling through the floor, lots of worry and anxiety about the future. What should you as young leaders do to actually take advantage of that opportunity? Well, three really simple things. Just, just never stop absorbing. Just keep reading and listening to what's going on and getting fresh perspective. Try and be objective and look at data, you know, whether it would be a business you're working in or, or the overall industry. Try and get a sense of what's happening. Talk with teams and managers and think about um, you know, what you're seeing. And finally, and most importantly, get creative. You know, now is absolutely the time while hotels are quiet and while the industry is rebuilding over the next few years for us to try some really, really creative things. If I think about examples I've already seen in the last few months, we've got lots of hotels and chains now suddenly offering food delivery, um, suddenly offering you know, hampers of food that you can pick up and take home. Uh, we've seen tour companies obviously shut down, offering Instagram tours um, of kind of key destinations around hotels or around city centers. We've seen uh, hotel chains in Europe turn meeting rooms into virtual studios for people to do events like this with big green screens in the background and kind of look like they're presenting from all over the world. We've seen resorts open up for kids clubs and, and day rental leisure facilities for the local community. So there are ideas all around us that we should be trying. Um, and that's really the nature of, of this, this thought of crisis as, a, as an opportunity. But three things to really think about because we are being forced to innovate. It, it's going to be tough out there and not everything is, is going to work. The, the priorities that I see in the industry right now, in every conversation I have, one is growing more revenue resiliency. So not just thinking about rooms revenue, but how else can this hotel make money if rooms revenue is going to come back slow? Two is improving efficiency, which is uh, getting creative potentially with staffing, automating some of the processes with technologies. And then lastly, of course, is can you do that stuff without the guest experience suffering? Can you create this seamless experience where people love booking on your website, get excited about the engagement pre-stay, and while they're at the hotel, you know, potentially you've introduced contactless check-in or a slightly different in-room or dining experience, or can you actually, um, can you actually make that work with um, out the guests noticing kind of anything's not wrong, but, but changed in terms of COVID. So that's kind of some, some thoughts there, but you do have to balance right now with next up because 80% of a team is gonna be obsessing about getting hotels reopened and fighting you know, day by day for business. You're only gonna be able to spend 20% of your time, you've got to fight for that 20%, thinking about the next 90 days, the next six months, the next 12 months and, and beyond. But you've absolutely got to um, carve out that plan and, it's, and, it's, and it's, hard, it's definitely hard to do. You've got to do kind of three things really. One is, is you need a written plan. And, and if you're asking if there is a written plan and there isn't one, how do you expect the team to align? How do you know what people are working towards? And frankly, when you get up in the morning, how do you know you're doing the right things if no one is saying, look, this is what we need to get done in the next 30 days, 90 days, or this is where we want to go in the next two or three years? You have to put a little bit of resource behind it. And, and you know, some things happen for free, but not a lot happens for free. Resource is really about accountability. Who's going to be doing this? What do they need? Just roughly, what are some expectations in terms of, say, budgets and timings? Would you be prepared to pay for results? You know, we see a lot of technology companies now thinking, well, we'll maybe have to install us our kit for free, but we'll earn money when the hotel earns money. You know, we'll earn money on, on creativity. Well, when, when, you, when you get there, you've got the start of a business case because you need to be able to have that conversation with a tech company and have that conversation among your peers in the hotel company and think, yeah, you know what? Now is the time to try this. It'll be free to start and we'll only pay when it, when it really works. And then last is experiment. And people call this pilot, people call it minimum viable product or MVP, people call it trials. But whatever you call it, you just have to know that at some point, and I always say as soon as possible, you have to stop talking and try something. You know, what does it feel like when guests or staff touch this idea that you've had? You know, does it work? Does it make the experience better, worse, and do enough people 
use it to actually kind of get those returns, make make money as you were thinking. Doesn't mean doesn't mean you're committed forever because you can always stop stuff. A lot of experiments won't work and failure's okay, but you need to actually have a have a team where you can get stuff tried. And it may be that you can just go from idea to experiment and that's amazing. But overall, what we're seeing is that organizations are trying to do that stuff while actually taking a look at their overall strategy. And, it, and it's really important to know the part as a young leader that you're playing in the strategy of the business overall. And of course, the, you know, how important is the area that you're, you're working in? So I won't spend loads of time on this. There'll be lots of different strategy approaches you can use, but it, it always involves roughly the same framework, which is what the key question, what are you really trying to achieve? Is this about growing total revenues? Is this about reducing the reliance on room revenues? Is it about improving margins? Is it about expanding your hotel to new sites? But what do you really want to do in the next two or three years, whatever your time frame is? And then on the fact base, you, you need to pull together as much data as you can. Often in this day and age, that's just about talking to lots of experts. Even if you're you know, doing this as a case study while you're at, at Battelle, you can always be contacting companies and just say, well, how does this work and what are you seeing? You've got to understand what's going on in the market. You've got to pull enough data together to understand what's going on in your, in your business. Test some of your ideas out with people and be really, really um, open to new perspectives. You're not just trying to prove that your hunch is, is correct. And by the time you're getting around to options and priorities, you're almost looking at mini business cases. You know, what might be the returns of different activities? How fast can they impact? And especially now, people probably won't be ready to look at stuff that doesn't drive a high impact quite quickly. Doesn't mean it's not a good idea. You just might need to sow that seed a little bit later, um, especially obviously if it's around larger change, around technology and culture and that kind of thing. Look beyond the obvious is what I would say. You know, if it's hard to get the data out of, a, out of a company, it could be that that's one of the challenges. Do you have an issue with data quality? Do you have an issue with technology? You know, if you can't get great insight into your guests, it probably means you're not personalizing the stay and, and kind of communicating to different types of guests in different, in different ways. Equally, if some of the options just look too hard to do because you don't have the skills in house, is that an opportunity for a partnership or you know, a different company to kind of come in and, and help? What happens when you skip strategy and go straight to you know, action or you go with your first hunch is you often end up with a really narrow kind of quite tedious kind of approach. So one of the big things we're seeing at the moment, every hotel company is talking about cleanliness. You know, every marketing message is about cleanliness, but is that really, the main insight right now that will get people traveling. You know, what else is there that will get people moving in terms of kind of confidence and messages? And also, is that just a marketing message or has that cleanliness point been cascaded right through the teams to the fact that, you know, your restaurants, bars and rooms are actually cleaner than ever? So I think, I think there's a really interesting um, kind of question about whether the industry does think broadly enough about strategy whether enough people are involved and, and we're, we're creative enough so then what are you going to work on well i think really important to remember as, as students in this space we've we've backed ourselves into a really complicated industry you know running a hotel or a chain of hotels is, is one of the most complex industries i think there is we need to be experts in everything digital and everything guest experience and loads of technology we're constantly being asked around you know fitness and wellness and sustainability we're running restaurants um so i think uh, each business needs to decide well, what are you going to hang your reputation and your brand on what are you going to be different at and where is it okay to just be good and, and in, in that case, those are probably the kind of places where some of your partnerships will come in useful. Um, and I did want to touch, touch briefly on that because there's so much great technology in the industry. There's so many different vendors for all kinds of solutions across the guest experience journey, across um, hotel operations. It's really important that you're aware of them. You're constantly increasing your knowledge, but also kind of what this slide's all about. It's really important you know how to use partnerships. You know that process of you know, researching who's out there and could solve a particular priority for you, getting ready to launch, not just the fun stuff of the pilot, but the you know, slightly more serious stuff on you know, sharing data and on, on information security and procurement and contracting. And then of course on results, really building a partnership which everyone is invested in, in working. So 
definitely wanted to kind of chat through all of those areas. Really wanted to talk about the framework of you know, how to do innovation, how to think about strategy, how to think about delivering impact, how to think about partnerships. So I'd, I'd absolutely spend um, a bit of time thinking about, do you know enough about those areas that as you start roles in hospitality or as you think about progression up the ladder, you know how to have an impact on the businesses you're working in? Because if you're just taking instructions from your line manager, chances are that's not going to be the tools that are going to be needed for the next three to five years, which are going to be, you know, fairly tough for the industry to kind of build its way out of this. But that's why the second part of the presentation is, is all about you, is all about um, discussing either the skills you need and how you develop. And, uh, and obviously letting you into a, a, a very you know, simple answer, which is Vitell is launching a free program for you, connecting students and alumni with senior hospitality leaders who have been there before in all areas of a hotel and in various different crises throughout time. And so they know the toolkit for recovery and they know the kind of things that we've been, been talking about now. So the key, key kind of message in this section is that you know, tough times require quite a different mindset. And remember, everyone around you is having a really tough time as well. I think one of the big things I've seen in the last six months and talking to hundreds of people about mentoring is that the skills that it takes to do well when hotels are at 80, 90% occupancy are very different to the skills that you take when you're at 10 or 20% occupancy and, and rebuilding. So you're going to be thinking about agility and, and, and kind of thinking about forward looking plans with a high degree of uncertainty. If you're in things like sales and marketing, you're going to be hustling a little bit more, which is, you know, you're going to need to try stuff much faster and act on an idea and know how to start initiatives and campaigns more quickly and then potentially stop them if they don't get results. You know, if you're in operations, you're going to be ruthlessly cost cutting. It does mean you're going to be a lot more hands on as well. You know, you'll be rolling up sleeves, picking up screwdrivers and fixing things yourself. You know, I had a great interview with um, a CEO of a hotel chain the other day, and he's been back to the floor, you know, furloughing his teams. He's been walking the floors, looking at basic maintenance items because he just has to show that you know, no one can be too functional. No one can be too proud. If you're in this industry to serve guests, you do that kind of whatever way you can when things are, things are tough. And that's pretty different to the conversation we would have been having a year ago, where you probably are thinking more about fine tuning. You probably are thinking about a lot more about culture and engagement. Those things are still important, but right now is about survival. It really is about can the businesses keep their doors open? And so you just have to kind of knuckle down um, and, and expect the fact that, you know, training and development budgets will be a bit tougher. But again, should just make it more um, compelling that you go and find your own development solutions over the next over the next few years. So is mentorship right for you? Well, I firmly believe having done this for uh, a few uh, a while now, everyone benefits from mentoring every kind of mentee and also the mentors, which is really interesting as well. You know, one is they can definitely help you better manage the current reality. You know, we've got mentee groups talking about exactly what they're working on at work what they should do next, maybe not wanting to tell their line manager they don't quite know what to do next, or as a student thinking about the, the, the world, you know, kind of next, well, really thinking about the next few years in, in hospitality, you know, better understanding what are the questions being asked in the function you want to go into, and what are some of the tools and technologies, what are some of the data sources that are, that are kind of more relevant than ever. You know, we've had discussions in our forum where people have been comparing notes on the best kind of contactless check-in technology. You know, there is no perfect answer. You can read lots of blogs, but how great to have other people who have just kind of checked out various partnerships and, and tried things. So that, that's really the idea. And then of course, it's a chance to build your network. You know, certainly with a great Vitell community of current students and alumni, but then beyond as well, you know, peers from other hospitality schools, people from chains all over the world um, as well. And so we've assembled 100 or so industry leaders so far. We're growing pretty quickly. We've got people who are innovation experts out of places like Hilton, uh, revenue experts out of some of the um, global chains like Louvre. 
people who own hotels like me here, um, based out of Singapore. He owns Taj, Hilton, and Accor brands. So really knows the pain of you know, refinancing and keeping the doors open. Um, and then, yeah, lots of good GM groups as well. So Mirko um, is, runs a task force going around, trying to help hotels stay open at Movenpick. And we've got people at some of the boutique and niche disruptive brands of tomorrow as well. You might have heard of brands like Sonder and Selena, you know, very cool young brands right on, right on trend. And then some of the um, kind of more luxury brands like Nobu and Four Seasons as well. So whatever you think you want to go into, chances are there are people in our network you know, working in those parts of the world or for those companies. And they are, they're generous with their time where they can be and they want to give back and they want to give you a chance to um, really plan your own, your own time um, ahead. So how to get started? Well, you know, it really starts with, it really starts with you. We've, we've made it super simple. You just go to our website, which is thegrowthworks.com forward slash mentorship. I'll, I'll show it again at the end. You register your details and then we give you a simple welcome email and Google form. Do check your junk mail for that one in case, just in case it ends up there, where you can just let us know that you're from Patel so we can kind of keep, keep that group together and talk about the kind of things you might be interested in. And that can be particular functions like uh, revenue management, operations, but it might just be softer skills of just actually, you know, what goes on in those first early years or um, how do you think about leadership skills and some of that, some of that stuff that complements some of the things you're studying in school. We then get you onto our, our platform um, and there we will do a few things. One is we will put you into a small group for mentoring. Typically four to five um, mentees per mentor works really well. So you get peers to share ideas with as well um, and, and get lots of fresh ideas. But we've also got specialist channels. So if you just want to learn about technology, if you just want to learn about um, leadership, you just want to learn about what free training and development might be out there for young professionals, we've got experts who are kind of on hand to, to do that as well. So um, it's simple to use. You've probably used Slack before. If not, it's just like a giant WhatsApp group, basically. You've got all these different groups to talk about um, whatever you need to, uh, to discuss. So once you're on there, it, it's actually uh it's actually something you effectively run yourself you know it doesn't require a huge amount of project management from us the idea is you let your mentor know the kind of topics you want to cover you reach out in in the forum and, and respond to various questions being asked or, or pose your own and it, and it seems to work pretty pretty seamlessly so honestly the ball is absolutely in your court you know, we, we are delighted to be partnering with Patel on this we're opening it up to a number of hospitality schools around the world obviously Patel is absolutely one of the most prestigious the idea is that this is completely free to you um, we in time will build a whole Patel community around it with Patel mentors and mentees but for now we'd love you to join the platform be exposed to all the mentors and mentees and, and ideas from around the world the only thing we ask for is time, you know, and it can be an hour a month where you just join this call, obviously on time and you're respecting that everyone is doing it um, for free. Um, you may want to spend a bit more, you know, in some of the Slack channels, a bit like going onto Facebook, I suppose, kind of seeing who's saying what and what your contribution is. We really appreciate when people are engaged and active, so even if it's just liking stuff and adding emojis to people's comments, it still shows that we're building that community. Um, it's a new opportunity, so we're all learning. So please go ahead and sign up, then do let us know what works and what doesn't. You know, on, on campus, um, you know, we've got um, a campus alumni, uh, sorry, campus kind of ambassador helping us manage the program. Natalie's on point as well to kind of keep getting it better. But we, we genuinely feel like for students of Vattel, uh, uh, what's gonna be quite a challenging few years ahead is designed to be something, you know, fairly unique, fairly accessible for everyone wherever you are in the world frankly right now it's great to be part of a community um, and really think about you think about the kind of skills you want to get out of it the kind of leader you want to be and frankly think practically about where you might go in your hospitality career um, you know as you finish up your studies or as you move ahead so it's absolutely for students right now it's absolutely for um, early career alumni and then more senior leaders can of course apply to be be mentors everyone's got something to learn and, and everyone can benefit from mentoring. So feel free to find us on social, Instagram and in, um, LinkedIn and Facebook. 
obviously feel free to email me anytime, but you know, join the platform at um, you know, thegrowthworks.com forward slash mentoring, it's a simple registration form, and we can't wait, to, uh, can't wait to hear from you. So hopefully a pretty fast, rapid introduction to the world of strategy and managing in a crisis, and then hopefully some really simple thoughts on how you can manage yourself over the next few weeks, months, and years, and uh, how the role that mentoring can play. And hopefully with that tie up with Patel, um, could be a pretty valuable service. So that's all from me. Really appreciate your time. I think it's been a good session. Can't wait to hear what questions you have, but thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, James. That was a really good presentation. Uh, hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, and we will um, collect uh, your questions. Uh, everybody who is following this uh, session live, uh, I encourage you to ask questions using the chat button and we will put you on screen so you can ask your questions to James uh, directly. Waiting for, let me see, so that I see we have uh, uh, attendees from um, the US and the Philippines with Jerome um, and many more to come, I hope. Um, waiting for the first questions to come up. Uh, I, I have a, a few for you, uh, James, if I may. Of course. Um, yeah. uh, Vivian, uh, can we go back to uh, the screen where we can see each other instead of the PowerPoint, maybe? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Um, so, James, um, I, I really think it's interesting um, to um, consider this uh, opportunity of mentoring. It's really yeah. something I'm, I'm excited to offer to the Vatel students who are working on it. I, uh, we have already many students who are interested and, and started to register. Um, the questions some of them have been uh, asking is, what is it, what is it for uh, the, the, the the mentors? What is it from for here, for them? You know, what, yeah. why does a mentor actually choose to spend time um, with students and just uh, you know be a mentor? What is their motivation, basically? Yeah, you know that's a really interesting question, and and I'm obviously trying to understand that as well as we try and strengthen the mentor side of the community. I, I think we we've held some really good feedback sessions already to try and understand what people are doing, and and the answers are quite mixed actually. I think a few things that really jump to the top is one is um, people love to teach. You know, I think when people have learned something and they know that they can um, they can give back, it, it's really nice to actually be forced to think structuredly in a structured way what what am i what what did i learn then and could i explain it to someone else because sometimes when you're in the field you know your general manager or your head of revenues you just feel like you're uh you know you're not feeling like you're doing anything that you would train or is structured and it's only after the event that you realize oh you know what i do have a bit of a toolkit now so i think people love to love to teach i think that people also generously genuinely do love to give back as well I, what we're seeing is that um, especially with how hard things have been. People who know that there, there is light at the end of this tunnel, they, they were here in 2008, 2009, or they've been through SARS or Ebola or uh, you know, the 9-11. You know, the you know, some of these senior leaders, they know it gets better and they can also see the level of anxiety in the industry. And so they actually want to give back. I think there's also that they're learning too. So we had one of our one of our leaders um, came off, uh, you know, a webinar session. He was saying it's fantastic because actually he shared his approach on something, and he realised that people in their early twenties were thinking a very different way about travel. I think in this case they were talking about loyalty programmes, and actually realising that it's a lovely focus group to have, you know, lots of young people uh, where you know listening and sharing ideas, but also young people who are quite outspoken, hopefully, and can say, well. That's not how I see the world. And actually these brands maybe don't appeal to me or that, that way of thinking about revenue management, does that really work in a world of Netflix or in a world of um, you know, some of these different, different trends that are coming up? So there's that concept of reverse mentoring where you know, the, the people who are more veterans with more field experience actually, actually get a ton out of it as well. So I think that's a big thing. Um, 
those are those, you know those are probably the top three but i'm sure if you were to ask our range of mentors they'd come up with a whole range of answers because sometimes it's deeply personal you know sometimes they've just had a fantastic mentor when they were just starting out or perhaps they didn't and they and they and they were looking for answers that didn't weren't answered so i think there's a lot of personal stuff in there as well but um obviously the results are we've got a really passionate engaged group of people who are willing to kind of carve out time for, to help which is which is fantastic yeah that's really the beauty of this program is to uh, really put together the really experienced people with the new generation coming up and and and, and learning uh, you know especially in this time where it's not gonna, it's not that easy to find an internship uh, so learning this way uh, is is absolutely a fantastic uh, opportunity for sure. Um, I see we have a question from uh, Madge Alan. Uh, if Vivian could um, put on screen uh, Madge so he can ask his questions to James, that would be great. If I can manage that. If not, I can. I mean, I can ask it if if that's easier. Okay, oh. uh, probably now. Uh, no, we have the point. So, so Madge was just asking if you can't see it. Is um, does it include on the on the job training and a bit like to Natalie's point, really? So, this isn't an internship. Um, if you're if you're working now it's absolutely an opportunity for you to talk about what you really are facing at work. So in the sense that, you know, if you want someone to talk to that's not your line manager about a specific challenge or the next few months or how you've been, how you're dealing with a particular task or initiative, this is absolutely for that. So in, in that way, if you have a job or you have an internship, this is a great training ground. You know, it's a fresh perspective. Um, from a group of people who can maybe help you think about and tackle a problem. Um, but what this isn't, obviously, this isn't an internship. This isn't, the mentors don't offer you work, maybe, or they haven't yet anyway. Um, you know, it's about a virtual community of people from around the world sharing ideas and offering their perspective. So if you're working uh, or you're doing a case study, they can absolutely respond and help with your training, if you like. But, but so far, no, this isn't about offering you work in a hotel. This isn't about offering you an internship. Again, I can't think of a better way to network than speak to 100 people from around the world. So if that is on your roadmap, then I think that you know, definitely this could be a, a good way to build that network and build that community. But no, this certainly isn't a job board of people asking for jobs or people um, posting ads. So uh, that, that's probably something a little bit different to to the Vitel mentoring program that we're launching. So hopefully that helps, Madge. Yes, thank you, James. Uh, I hope we um, answer your questions, uh, Madge. Um, the other questions I often have is really, um, you know, what is going on when you are a, train, uh, a mentee and you are part of a group um, and what's going on with the mentee? How, how does that interaction goes between the mentor and the mentees yeah so absolutely so uh, let me tell you what it works like in a perfect scenario and then i'm sure there's lots of versions of it so what we're finding works really well you're all in a channel uh you know a bit like again like a whatsapp group the mentor and the and the three to five or six mentees um typically the mentor will um ask what kind of topics people want to talk about um, and then the group builds up a bit of a list, might be five to 10 topics, and that helps give them a bit of an agenda um, for those first few, first few calls, and then they kick those off and then they keep them going. They then jump on the call. The mentor will normally take the first 10, 15 minutes or so, perhaps just give a bit of an update on you know, what they're seeing, their experience, um, and kind of what they're working on right now. And then really it's down to the group to decide how to use that time. So they may decide that they kind of one person wants to talk about a big area and they're all interested in discussing that topic. It might be a live project they're having at work, or it might just be that different people in the group um, share different share different things. Um, so you'll either be talking about live problems or, or thoughts that you're having, uh, as a or you will have pre-agreed. Hey, we really want to talk about you know meta search, or we really want to talk about bringing people back from furlough and how you manage it, or we really want to talk about preparing for a job interview. 
So, you know, based on the topics that were agreed before the call, so it's not completely random and who, what's your most popular, you'll structure the call with either the mentor talking quite a lot or the mentees kind of taking turns to share what's on their thoughts. But the key point is discussion. You know, it's kind of just because one person is talking, it doesn't mean it's just them and the mentor. The idea is that if you've had a similar experience or you've got a perspective, it's really that power of the group and the discussion that produces really, really great results. Afterwards, we've seen people, you know, sharing decks and sharing models and, uh, you know, um, articles and all of that kind of stuff. And then, you know, the idea is that it, whether it be two weeks, three weeks or four weeks later, you keep up that rhythm of meetings and it becomes a kind of really good kind of network you know, session to keep, keep revisiting things. Um, but obviously if a mentee has got a really big problem, then they can, um, then they can, they, they can kind of take the lion's share of that time because I think it'll, if it's one that'll be really interesting to everyone in the mentee group. So that's kind of how it works. A combination of messaging on Slack to decide agendas and kind of coordinate and, and feedback. And then that live hour once every two, three or four weeks to debate kind of live topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what's really uh, interesting is that first, um, students who would be <clears throat> who would be interested to um, to find a mentor uh, can find oh no yes <laughs> can find um, uh, an expertise a mentor with a specific expertise to learn from and then all the people joining uh, this this um, this group uh, would be would have an interest with the same expertise um, so that that what makes it really um, uh, specific and interesting. Uh, especially when um, you were mentioning that new skills are needed or, uh, you know, for example, the, the need of data and, um, uh, you know, how to, um, to use uh, data and information to move on to new procedure, for example, for a hotel and, uh, and, and adapting with the situation, then um, having a mentor with expertise in, in, let's say, the data field, uh, it's yeah. really a plus because then, um, you know, a, a mentee can really use um, some of this expertise themselves and, 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 and put it into um, uh, action uh, in, in, in their field or, or even putting it in, a, in the resume. Would that be also a good idea to, to put Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're, and and pretty, pretty much everyone we're seeing is putting their menteeship. Uh, on their LinkedIn, you know, as part of their part of their experience. Um, so hopefully that will will definitely help. But I I couldn't agree I couldn't agree more in terms of topic. This is not theory, right? You know, you obviously are all at Vattel for you know your your theory for your lectures for your frameworks. This is about what's being seen in the field right now or in the last kind of crisis and recovery. What did this leader see? So. Data is a great example, although people obviously think it's a little bit dry, but you know, if you're in revenue management right now or you're a GM, well, the data you're going to be looking at for the next few months is completely different than it would have been a year ago. You know, mm -hmm. We're seeing people who are um, you know, grabbing as much forward-looking data as they can or they're looking ruthlessly at cost lines, but they can really describe how they're doing that, you know, how they run those meetings, what they expect of their early career leaders um, who are in their team. So it's a fascinating source of information. There's also really cool partners out there, as I was mentioning in the, in the webinar, often doing, you know, 90 day free trials or, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of very low cost startups. So even just sharing ideas around that, like, you know, are you using OTA insights is a great one for kind of what's going on in the, in the next few months in your market. Hot source is another one that's really good for how efficient is your, kind of team have you got the right kind of cost base there's all these really cool tools out there that maybe a lecturer that hasn't known about or or colleagues in your in your business don't know about but people people know about these so it's a really nice chance to hear what tools data techniques people really do use in the world of obviously distribution or revenue management like that's super critical um right now so but again it's not limited it, it can go anywhere the mentees want it to um, or if you want to, you can kind of sit back and listen and just really kind of hear what, what it really is like to be a revenue manager, to be a sales manager, kind of, kind of right now. And we have senior mentors who are kind of, 
you know, uh, seen a couple of crises before, the veterans with more field experience. We've also got some junior mentors who were only in your position three to five years ago. And so, um, you know, if you're graduated recently or you're still a, a student and thinking about um, your, your, your first few years, well, you know, what should you do? What kind of roles are interesting? Where can you learn the most? How do you be a great, you know, make a great impact? They can talk about some of those more general topics. You don't have to know you want to be a revenue manager. You don't have to know you want to be a sales manager. Um, you can actually just say, look, you know, let me, can you just tell me a bit about early career, you know, life in hospitality? What should I be trying to learn? What kind of, you know, conversations should I be having with people? How should I build my network? That kind of stuff. So it really can go anywhere, which is why it's quite, quite dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, um, uh, the options are um, really wide and, um, and this mentorship program can actually help uh, a student to find their way, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, career they want to have in the hospitality industry. There are so many options inside the hospitality industry, uh, would it be guest relations or marketing or data analysis or finance? And these mentors can really, um, you know, um, shed lights on what is it to be, for example, a data, data analyst, or what is it really to be in the finance uh, part of the of the hotel, and then the students can really see if it's uh, if it's a match for them for their career, right? Yeah, yeah, completely agree, completely hmm. agree. And um, um, what kind of help uh, a students who would be interested to enter this mentorship program um, can get onto actually deciding which mentor to choose? Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, obviously it all starts with a kind of a, a Google form and you can fill out the interests. Then we've got some pre-selected, so you can also just add anything that you want. And I think as we talk to a lot more students, we're getting quite a long list of things that people want to talk about. You then get put onto our Slack platform, but the first thing that happens is you get a message from myself and from Marina, who's our community manager. And so you can absolutely use that as a dialogue to say, actually, I'm kind of thinking, I've got questions about this, what do you suggest? We personally interview and vet, and so we know all of our mentors. Mentees, we're open to everyone, but mentors, of course, we, we curate and we vet. So we'll be able to match you with the person who we think is absolutely right. Um, and then after that first session, after most sessions, you do a feedback form. If, if it turns out you know, there would be a better fit in terms of you know, that personal fit or skills fit, we can absolutely kind of kind of try someone else. But then, as I say, you're not really limited to one. You know, we, we, we've got a couple of people who are in two groups and then we have these specialist channels, which the whole community can um, discuss. We also do whole community events like webinars and just online discussions about things like sustainability and innovation. And after those, we have a lot of people thinking, oh, I really want to join. Oh thinking that I really want to join, getting carried away, thinking I really want to join the sustainability group or we want to just you know, talk about innovation. So you know, I encourage everyone to join the platform, you know, uh, give us a sense of what you think you want to talk about. And then even if you change your mind, we want to be a broad enough organization that we can help, um, you know, whatever you do want to learn about. I will. And so I see uh, Tricia has a question for you and um, maybe we can um, uh, help her. She's, um, she's asking you, James, uh, if you have some suggestions on how um, we can still improve the guest experience. And that might be uh, a call for your expertise in innovation and uh, and uh, yes, absolutely. I love I love the, these kind of questions. We could do we could do a whole another webinar just on this. Look, the 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 easiest answer is walk the experience like a guest. You know, if you're talking about digital, try and book your hotel on some of the channels, uh, including obviously your own website, and then and then you know literally arrive at your hotel as if you're a guest and walk through the whole experience. Obviously the days of paying for mystery shoppers are kind of out the window, but, but again, that could be a really good, good way of, of doing it too. But you know, it's not until you try and use your elevators and lie in your beds and try and order at your restaurant that you really realize um, where things are going well and where things are going badly. You know, I, I personally worry that the guest experience is suffering because hotels have had to cut back on staff and they've implemented solutions and kind of contactless check-in that are just really clunky 
and they don't they don't really fit with the rest of the flow so i definitely want everyone to be looking at guest experience right now because we have to we have to make traveling amazing or else people will just stay at home and 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 be uh you know even less confident or see the value in it even less so i would absolutely start by walking and and writing down what do you want your guest experience to be like at each step of the journey and then how good do you really think it is and you'll have some scores off the back of that of like okay we really need to do some work you know in room or we really need to do some work you know, in the restaurant um yeah i could go on for hours about this it starts with strategy what do you want to be great at and where is it okay just to be you know good and then you know really walk it and see where where the truth lies what are you good at and what's what's a challenge um, i'd particularly look at things like the arrival experience especially in covid you know are they do they feel like they're walking into a hospital now do they feel like they're still walking to a hotel and if you have you have you just ruined that experience similarly the restaurant i think is going to be key now obviously we all need to be more safe than ever but have we taken away the excitement of you know eating and dining and sitting in a bar uh, so i think it's i think it's some of those areas need to be need to be looked at i would absolutely look at partnerships i've seen some of just the most amazing you know guest apps and in room technology and frankly property management systems if you want to kind of really start with the basics that are probably cheaper than what hotels use today because we, they haven't innovated for 10, 20 years. Um, and I think uh, uh, at exactly the right time, but obviously get the basics right, you know, clean, tidy, freshly painted, all of that stuff. And then, and then move on to the, the more kind of, you know, um, specialist stuff like technology, but so lo lots of stuff there, but yeah, that's a great, great question, Tricia, and um, definitely recommend um, people do start with the guest experience. Yes, excellent. Thank you, James. And uh, thank you, Tricia, for this question. I can feel the passion, James. And I'm sure you have um, great mentors also to help uh, students who want to dedicate their career to guest satisfaction. And uh, Absolutely. We have yeah, people even more obsessed about it than I am, definitely. <laughs> excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tricia is saying thank you. Um, the, the question I had also for you while uh, listening to your presentation, James, is that um, you were mentioning that, um, you know, there is a, a management that is like uh, made for like 90% uh, um, occupancy uh, hotel in, a, in, in a, you know, regular times. And then there is a kind of management uh, appropriate for the more challenging times, like the one we are living here. And so um, there are a few um, uh, ways uh, to, 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 to manage a hotel that implies uh, new skills, for example. And yeah. like, like we were saying with Stella, for example. And so uh, how would a student um, uh, find these new opportunities, these new job opportunities that would be really, really interesting um, to, to the skills to get in these challenging times. How would the students, um, uh, you know, recognize and spot these new skills that would be interesting for them to learn? Yeah, great, great question. Um, and I, I, I can offer some suggestions. Obviously, I can't guarantee that's where the jobs will, will be, but I can, I can kind of send off some suggestions. The, the first thing I would do is, I would say, is get comfortable with being a generalist. So, you know, chatting to some of the kind of CEOs we have recently, um, they're telling me that the staff that best supported them during the downturn were really happy to step out of their functional area or silo and help out with everything. You know, hotels, a year ago were you know sales revenue management marketing direct distribution indirect distribution and they may still be like that especially as they're bigger but you need to get comfortable if you want to be commercial for example with with really the priorities in all of those areas because people will need you to be flexible um as as the recovery comes because creative solutions don't always fit into fit into a silo so so expose yourself to a broad base of knowledge would be my absolute top tip if i was going to get a bit more specific i would also say get really comfortable with managing data and people really hate it if they're not comfortable with maths when people say that but it, it's not maths it's it's understanding how 
you're performing. So it's a bit of business and finance because we are all going to be entering businesses and really understanding what are the core economics of a business and then how do you get hold of that data and how do you use that data to understand how healthy you are and kind of what's coming next. So obviously, if you're in revenue management or finance, that's an incredibly high burden. You'll naturally be very data specialist. But I'd say in any function right now, marketing, will be, you'll be looking a lot at return on investment. Operations, you'll be looking a lot at efficiency, which is you know how much, for example, uh, how many dollars of revenue do you make for every dollar spent on your team members? You know, some of these, some of these um, tools are, are what you need. And you're going to need to be able to compare yourself to what you should be doing in your budget to uh, what last year was like. And of course, in, you know, what, what competitors in the market are doing. And so you're going to have to get comfortable with Excel or some of the more complicated data tools um, in the, in the industry. Um, there's that. And then lastly, I think I would just have a really broad base of knowledge around the different solutions that are in the industry. Again, you know, we probably don't want to become experts in property management systems, but we really need to start thinking about, you know, what different distribution partners do what, what different hotel systems do what, what kind of different guest systems there are. So again, it's that absorption point that I made where we just need to be really good students of the industry to just understand, actually, you may not need them all, but if you want to think about your guest experience, like, like the last question, you may just need to pick up the phone to four or five companies that do that and just hear their ideas. You know, it doesn't cost you any money. It doesn't cost them any money other than a bit of time to actually get to know each other and hear how your hotel could get better. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, it's not, not an easy answer, but I'd certainly say step out of your single function, and get a lot of skills, get really comfortable with data, and then make sure you know this space, a really good student of all the different solutions um, and kind of technologies that are out there. And then I think you'll probably have one of the most resilient approaches. There's obvious stuff as well, like build a really strong network, get a really good mentor, but I, that should probably speak for itself after the last uh, hour of us talking. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it seems pretty obvious that, uh, you know, um, hearing from uh, mentors that are in the business, in the front line of, you know, solving problems and adapting to the situation, uh, getting in touch with these people through the mentorship program is, is, is really um, the way to go, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so um, I think we don't have uh, additional questions for now. Um, is there anything else you would like to say about uh, the program and uh, how to join uh, the, the, you know, the growth work program? Yeah, and abs absolutely. I think, look, I'm, I'm really proud to have been asked by Vitel to introduce this program to the students. I think you know, all Vitel students, in addition to their studies, in addition to thinking about their careers, they should take up this, um, op this free opportunity to, to be mentored. It seems like a really obvious step to build a network, explore how their career could look and get some, get some advice around what they're working on. And if you're working now or you're out of work or furloughed, again, what better time to really be thinking about you know, your, your future and how you can be ready. So I, I really hope that, um, you know, we can make a success this together. I'm always open to feedback. So if anything isn't clear or isn't working, you know, do let us know. We'll, we'll learn together as we, as we introduce this. Um, absolutely. But yeah, I, I think my last point will be, you know, be, be, you know, retain some optimism. You know, all the mentors tell me this industry always bounces back. And this is the big one in terms of the depth of the crisis. And I know particularly in the US right now, how it still feels like, you know, we're right in the middle of it. But this is an industry, people have a human need to travel, to have real experiences and to connect. They absolutely will come back. And this will be a core industry for kind of the global economy. So yeah, would, I, I know that perspective is shared by all of our mentors because they regularly tell me. So do come and join the community. It's just, yeah, it's, it's thegrowthworks.com forward slash mentorship. It's completely free to sign up. We would love to have as many of you as possible join the community and, and be part of the engagement. Yes, excellent. And, uh, and of course, there is this special opportunity for the Vitale students, but uh, anyone can join uh, the growth work, right? 
Absolutely. It's a, it's a, the GrowthWorks network is, is completely free and, and that's our DNA. Is it'll always be free to mentors and mentees. Any one of the 320 million people who work in hospitality around the world are welcome to join. Uh, and it'd be quite fun if they all did. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun, a fun few months and years, I think, building this out. Yeah, I think it's very, very promising. Um, and of course, we will send uh, the link to this uh, recorded webinar with the uh, URL center and, and how to register for all those who are interested to join uh, the growth work program and uh, the mentorship. Perfect. Okay. Thank Very you. Well. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Nancy. Well. Thanks everyone Thank for attending. Thank you so much, James. It's really a pleasure to, uh, to have you here and to, to hear your insights. Uh, I hope everybody uh, really enjoyed uh, this webinar uh, as much as I did. Um, I would like to make a few announcements on what's next. Uh, uh, if Vivian can uh, move the, to the next slides, uh, then I can uh, properly do, yes. So Q&A, we are just done with that, thank you. Um, September 9, we're expecting Sergei Iver, and um, it's actually um, uh, really on point with what we just said because Sergei is actually a graduate from Vatel USA <clears throat> in uh, 2016 and is now a general manager. He has uh, a, a true entrepreneur uh, mentality and is gonna talk to us about how to shift perspective and finding new ideas to become an entrepreneur, uh, especially in challenging times. So it's gonna be really interesting to hear from him. Um, I can offer him also to become a mentor for the growth work programs. That would be uh, awesome to have him there. Um, and then, of course, uh, to the next slides, <clears throat> um, the CSML <clears throat> and Alliance, sorry, <clears throat> um, have uh, uh, webinars uh, also every other weeks um, in, the, um, in about the analytics and data careers. So it's really on the point as well. Um, career and digital marketing, managing ESG fields, uh, the healthcare technology, because the Alliance is not only uh, a university group about hospitality or management, um, Alliance International University also have program in, um, in um, uh, laws and um, um, I'm sorry, I'm just not my expertise, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, the, the, the teaching also um, uh, for professional who wants to, to become teachers and, uh, and, and many other fields. So you, you can go to alliance.com, uh, uh, no, .edu, and you will have uh, all the details about all the programs that Alliance International University is offering. Uh, if uh, any of you listening to this webinar uh, wants to join VATEL and enter the bachelor or master degree programs, um, there is um, an email uh, that I'd like to share on the next slide, Vivian, please. Uh, so you can join uh, VATEL at just info at vatelusa.com. Uh, you can also call us and we will be happy to, um, you know, inform you and direct you to different programs, uh, not only, um, you know, in, in here in the USA, but Vatel also have uh, many schools all over the world, uh, in France and uh, uh, Asia and uh, Africa, everywhere. Um, we do, um, you know, you, you may know that the J1 program has been suspended uh, until at least December, but uh, the F1 uh, visa, uh, which is student visa, allows our students to come and uh, continue training here in the USA. So it's a, it's a really good news. Uh, and of course, if you want to join the, or know more about the Alliance International University programs, uh, you can call or uh, email uh, Leila Naderi, who uh, will be happy to, to share information about the Alliance University programs. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining. Um, I really uh, appreciate uh, your insight and, uh, and your presentation, James. It's thank an you. absolute pleasure and we are so excited to join forces with Vettel and the growth work to offer this amazing opportunity for the students to learn and grow with your mentors. That yeah, should be great. Thank you very much and good luck to everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. See you soon. Bye now. Bye-bye.